Imagine if I told you there was a series of movies about evil food. You probably think I was crazy. Or just talking about Domino's Pizza commercials. However, these films actually exist. And they're none other than Attack of the Killer Tomatoes, or Tomatoes, take your pick. You probably think, wow, that sounds stupid. And you would be right. They're absolutely stupid. And fully aware of it. And part of the charm of this series is how they poke fun at it. The first film, Attack of the Killer Tomatoes, was done on a very low budget of about $100,000. It acts as a parody of B-movies by having it be the most ridiculous concept imaginable. Nothing is played straight in this movie, and that plays into its charm. There's a very Zucker Brothers, Mel Brooks feel to the humor, particularly with the way the military takes this threat all too seriously while doing crazy things. Even the theme song is completely silly with its very bizarre lyrics. Now, the low budget means the acting is not that great, and the sound mix is very inconsistent. But that seems to play into what the film is trying to accomplish. It's self-aware of how much money they have, and it's easy to see where they cut corners in a very Ed Wood kind of way. Now, the joke does start to get a little old by the end, and for a movie called Attack of the Killer Tomatoes, the title fruit doesn't actually show up that often. But if you want a silly B-movie with not an ounce of seriousness and a good sense of humor about itself, you probably get a bit of a kick out of Attack the Killer Tomatoes. Eleven years later, the sequel, Return of the Killer Tomatoes, was released, and this one is my favorite in the series. It went even more nuts than its predecessor, with a lot of fourth wall breaking and self-aware gags. They even interrupt the film in the middle to include product placement. The characters are actually stronger in this one, especially Tara, a killer tomato transformed into a human. Some of the funniest bits involve her trying to be a part of human life while showing tomato-like tendencies, and her relationship with Chad is kind of sweet. This one also includes the addition of John Astin's villainous mad scientist Professor Gangrene, and Astin is really having a ball of a time in the part, which would continue on through the other films. Return of the Killer Tomatoes also features an early appearance by George Clooney. As stupid as the whole movie is, I laugh for the entire thing. And a part of that is that it's actually quite good-natured. And while it is a silly B-movie, it does not sacrifice character. The tone of Return of the Killer Tomatoes continued in Killer Tomatoes Strike Back, though Tara, Chad, and George Clooney are mysteriously gone. Thankfully, Professor Gangrene and the Fuzzy Tomato are still around. The humor still works, and again, I laugh through a lot of it. The movie also works in a commentary on the media and modern journalism that is hilarious, and it also amps up the horror film homages and even the mystery elements. Less successful, in my opinion, was Killer Tomatoes Eat Friends. Now, the joke had gotten kind of old, but there was still a bit of enjoyment found in it. The running gag of Mark Price pretending to be Mark J. Fox is funny, and it also pokes fun of the notion of American culture invading France. However, the spark seems to have been lost in this entry, even with John Astin still around to ham it up. Of course, like almost anything at the time, Attack the Killer Tomatoes was adapted into an animated series, mainly taking inspiration from Return of the Killer Tomatoes, as this one brings Tara back, though the way she transforms back to her original self is different. Really, this is just kind of your standard 90s Saturday morning cartoon. The scripts are fairly basic and formulaic, and it lost some of the zany humor of the films, though they managed to slip in a couple of fourth wall jokes here. It's good for a laugh, but it frankly does not do much for me. I've seen much worse cartoons based on movies, but this still lacks much to make me watch more than a couple of episodes. Through all the inconsistencies of this franchise, I cannot fault the glee the filmmakers obviously had when making them. There's a certain charm to how they knew these were incredibly stupid movies and just ran with it. To put it simply, they're like Roger Corman meets Zucker Brothers. And how can you not love... Why do I suddenly get the feeling there's something behind me? Oh my goodness. Oh, phew. It's just an orange. They're much less threatening. I'll see you next time.